Okay, perfect. So we are live already and welcome to our first attendees. Welcome to the webinar, which is called Umbrella Topic is like studying economics in Germany. And as always, my name is Georgi. I am the one who you are not interested in that much for today. So I will be today mostly behind the scenes as always moderating the webinar. But as you can see during this kind of subject webinars, we I'm not alone. We have several guests from German universities and they will present their specific and unique uh, study programs to you. But before uh, they start it, let, bear with me for some time. So for those who are not familiar with the webinar setting of Zoom, let me tell you that uh, the main button for you for this afternoon is the Q&A button. So it is already open. It will be open until the very end of the webinar. You can find it just next to the chat. And then you can send in your questions to the to our guests and then they will address it live either in the written form or after they are done with their presentations we will have a live q a session when where your questions will be addressed live so that's why stay tuned and also keep an eye on the chat let me uh, share with you my presentation a sh short presentation that i prepared for you uh, so let me introduce uh, the webinar agenda so we'll have uh, two guests today. So from Universität Bayreuth, we have Professor Dr. Sebastian Till Brown, and he will uh, present program in uh, master's program in history and economics. And then we'll uh, move to University of Jena, and we have uh, Dr. Markus Pasha, and he will talk about master of science level program in economics. Uh, so we were supposed also to have a guest from Univers University of Potsdam, Sophie Wagner, but she will also present it uh, next time because of personal reasons she couldn't attend today. So who is behind today's webinar? It is my German university and uh, we are Germany's largest database <clears throat> for English taught study programs. We have over 2,600 degree programs uh, on bachelor level and also master's level. We can we also have some short courses and language courses presented on our database. And our main goal is to assist international students in finding the right program for their studies in Germany. So how we do that? One of the key ways is through our study finder, and you can see now in front of your screens a demo version, so so-called so demo version of our study finder. But when you go to our website and you click on the uh, on the uh, study finder um, section, then you will see the full version of our study finder with all of its filters, which you can use to find the program much more efficiently and also according based according to your preferences, according to your background, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, the second way of helping you is through writing up articles. We have over 150 comprehensive articles on various topics when it comes to studying in Germany. If you're interested in APS, for example, if you're from China and India and you need APS or Vietnam, you can check out that um, articles on these topics. You are interested in writing letter of motivations, writing CVs or uh, visa issues like blocked account or studying medicine in Germany, Studienkolleg issue, so on and so forth. All this is presented for you for free. And I strongly suggest you to take a look at, the, at those articles. And last but not least, we are also <coughs> helping uh, our students through organizing webinars. We have approximately 150 webinars per year on different topics. Of course, regarding studying in Germany, they can be studying in Germany, general webinar. It can be scholarships in Germany, uni assist, visa issue, or the subject webinars like the one that you're attending right now, but on different subjects. For example, today we are going to talk about economics. We have also sub webinars on studying political science in Germany, studying engineering in Germany, studying biology in Germany, and so on and so forth. All of the webinars that are already planned and scheduled, you can find them uh, on our website in the webinar section, and you can sign up for these webinars for free and attend them, of course, for free. And my suggestion would be also for you to open an account on our webpage. By doing that, you'll be able to unlock all of the options that our web uh, our webpage is able to offer you. And of course, it's also for free. And our team is quite international. We are based in northern Germany, in Hamburg, but we are uh, also all in all over Germany and all over the world. That's why we're counseling in different languages. Um, yes, for those who are also interested in German taught study programs, I would also suggest you to check out Hochschul Kompass. There you might find some interesting programs uh, uh, re related to the discipline of economics. But if you are more into English taught study programs, then I would suggest you to check out for sure uh, uh, my German University Study Finder. There you will find programs, as I said, both on bachelor level and also on master's level. And you can see that most of them are in English only, meaning that you do not need any knowledge of German to get into these programs and in most cases to complete them, which is a great opportunity, for, of course, for international students. But as I always underline, it's always good to good 
good to use the opportunity and to study German when you are in Germany. Uh, also, uh, for those who are the newcomers and do not know what to expect when it comes to studying economics in Germany, for example, you have no idea what to expect. And um, uh, when when uh, dealing with this subject, um, we have subject pages also dedicated to different subjects and for where you can find information, for example, about the rankings of universities that are offering degrees in this uh, program uh, or tuition fee ranges that you, you should expect or different requirements like application, admission and so on and so forth. Uh, so this kind of general information is provided for you as a first step to understand better what does it mean to study this or that discipline in Germany. And it's I think it's a very good and useful first step for creating a bigger picture uh, of to have a concrete, uh, to un have uh, to understand what expectations you should have, right? Uh, regarding the, our tip uh, from our side, in order to find the right university profile and right study program for you, which is crucial uh, from my perspective, it's uh, also important to take into account not only just one particular aspects like only fees or only rankings or only city names you have to take into account all of this together and even more in order to make sure that you are informed uh, of what Germany is able to offer you in this particular regard and and then you can make an informed decision which is crucial again for your successful career uh, also I would like to say that uh, there are two key types of universities in Germany. One is called Universität type of university and another one is called University of Applied Sciences. In English, it's called like that. In German, it can have some different variations that you can you will encounter for sure. Now, the key difference between these two is in focus. So uh, when it comes to Universität type of university, the focus goes more onto research and theory. In case of University of Applied Sciences, we are talking more about application and practice. Again, this is how it looks generally. Uh, and last but not least, in addition to aspects that I mentioned before that you have to take and you should take into account if you want to make a right decision, a right choice. Another thing is that when you're using our study finder, please be a little bit more flex flexible with wordings. Don't be too strict. And when you're flexible and you take into account all those aspects that we mentioned before, then you'll make sure that you have drastically increased at least uh, your chances of making, of being aware of the landscape of, for example, what does it, uh, what Germany is able to offer you when you want to study in English, for example, and economics. And then you will make for sure make, uh, be able to make an informed and right decision. So that's also crucial. And I would like you to take this into account. That being said, that was all from my side. And now I'm inviting you to move to the south, more southern part of Germany, to University of Bayreuth. And we, as I already introduced, we have Professor Dr. Brown, and he will now talk about Master of Arts level program in history and economics. And you can see where the university is also located uh, in front of your screens. I'm stopping my screen share and inviting the Professor to take the floor. Great, thanks a lot, uh, especially for using this photo. And I'm, I'm probably 30. <laughs> Uh, on this photo. Um, so much younger. Uh, so my name is Sebastian Braun, as you already know. Um, I'm professor for quantitative economic history at the University of Bayreuth. And I'm very happy to present the MA history and economics. Let me share my screen. Okay, this should now work. Yeah, perfect. Um, so I'm also one of the study coordinators of this uh, program. So this is a joint program of the economics department and the history department in Bayreuth. So I'm the study coordinator uh, from the economic side. And let me just start with giving you a very quick overview what this program is, is about. So um, economic history has in the recent like 10, 15, 20 years uh, been booming, I would say, or at least uh, has encountered a, a revival. Um, if you have followed the Nobel Prize this week, uh, it was awarded to Claudia Goldin for advancing our knowledge of the labor, out labor market outcomes of, of women. 
But this is also a Nobel Prize uh, that goes to economic history because she's really looking at these labor market outcomes in the very long run and then in the last 200 years or so. Um, the boom also has something to do with, say, the crisis that we have encountered. So think about the financial crisis, 2008, 2009. There, um, we discussed a lot whether we can learn from the past crisis, let's say the Great Depression of the 1930s, um, and the same was true if you think about uh, the refugee influx into Europe in 2015, 2016. Um, if we have these types of events, we often look um, into the past um, to yeah, get some help, if you like, for uh, what to do, because of course it's, it's tricky to make decisions in real time. And so um, we often make sort of analogies. Um, with with the past with past events, so economic history has been booming, and um, what this MA offers you is an interdisciplinary education in both history and economics. So it's not only about economic history. You will see in the curriculum that's core part of the program, but it also gives you an introduction into into the two subjects, history and economics. Therefore, it's called history and economics rather than economic history. Um, and I would say that's an, a, a program that is currently unique in Germany. Um, partly that's because there are not that many chairs in economic history uh, in, in Germany. Um, Bayreuth has two chairs, one in the history department and one in the economics department. And we together run uh, this, this program. So this is the third bullet point here. It's organized jointly by the history and economics department. So it's a truly interdisciplinary program. And it teaches you both the quantitative uh, methods that I typically apply in my research, so statistics, econometrics, but also the more qualitative methods um, that are often used in the history department. So you will get both perspectives. And um, therefore, it's also open not only to students with a good undergraduate degree in economics, uh, but also to students with a good undergraduate degree in history. Uh, the second requirement is strong English language skills because it's uh, completely talk, uh, taught in, in, in English. Okay, let me go th a little bit through the curriculum so that you have an idea of what would of what you can expect from such a program. So it's a two-year program. Um, and here is how it is structured. That is the first part. So you do have uh, foundational courses in economic history, so growth and crisis. One of the big questions in economic history is always, why are some countries now rich, others stay poor? And that's the uh, fundamental question probably in economic history. And we will talk about a lot about this, in especially in Foundations 1, but also in Foundations 2, where we talk more about the evolution of the global economy. Um, and there's a third foundational course on state and institution and how these are, uh, yeah, how institutions, for example, have shaped economic development in the very long run. Um, importantly, we have the skill convergence modules. So depending on your background, you will either get an introduction to economics and to empirical methods. That's if you have a big background in history, or if you have a background in economics, you will do introduction to economic history and introduction to history taught at the history department. Yeah. Um, so that's, of course, a challenge for the program, different backgrounds, and we um, will bring you up to speed so that you speak a common language depending on your on your background you will do different things here um, then you will um, obtain and learn uh, skills and methods so um, you will get advanced empirical methods so this is basically the course that you would also take if you do a, a master's in economics in Bayreuth so that's advanced empirical economics but then also more specific methods in economic history quantitative methods in economic history where you will learn things like how to make maps on the computer for example um, how to use text as data so it's partly data science I would say uh, but then also historical methods, again, quantitative and qualitative uh, methods. You have, of course, specialization uh, courses that you can take. Uh, what is also important, I would say, is that there is a research colloquium. So in every semester, um, you will attend this research colloquium 
where we read papers at the research frontier in economic history and also have guests from abroad, so um, external speakers. So if you are interested in doing a PhD, that's really a very good um, preparation for your future career and, and something that is quite unique about this program as well. There's an internship, a compulsory internship, and of course, a master thesis. So that's the curriculum in, in a nutshell. Now, let me say a few words also about uh, the university and, and about our students. So uh, the University of Bayreuth is in, yeah, from my perspective, being born in the West and, and having lived in the North, it's sort of based, it's, it's, it's in the South of Germany, um, but sort of in the Northern part of Bavaria, not Northeastern part of Bavaria. Um, it's a young university founded in the 1970s. It's a medium-sized campus. So we have approximately 12,500 students. Uh, the town has a bit more than 70,000 uh, inhabitants. And it's located in, in the heart of scenic Upper Franconia. So what the campus, and I will show you a picture in, in a minute, it's a campus university, and that's really uh, important. So uh, the departments are very close uh, to each other. Um, so what the campus really offers you is study programs in small groups, personal contact to your lecturer, close networking, uh, networking and short distances. So if you're looking for so, sort of a big city university, then Bayreuth is probably not your place. Um, but if you are looking for a campus small group teaching, personal contact, then uh, Bayreuth is a great place. It's a young university, but it's still uh, highly ranked. So it's consistently ranked among the top young universities for example, in the Times Higher Education uh, Global Ranking. And it has this long-standing emphasis on the interdisciplinary programs that's probably coming from our campus where departments are so close to each other. So for example, if you look at the economics uh, department, we offer a couple of these interdisciplinary programs. Um, the first was, for example, philosophy and economics, uh, that's sort of a success story and history and economics is sort of modeled um, uh, on, on this, this earlier program. And that's the, the campus. Uh, so it's a campus university, as I said. So it's really centered around this star or whatever it, whatever it is. And you can see here basically the different departments um, around the, the middle of the campus. Um, you also see, a, a, if you go outside the city or the town, it's, it's quite rural, uh, a lot of nature. If you like this, uh, you can do hiking, uh, biking, and this kind of stuff. Um, but it's still a, a, a nice university town, quite old, uh, quite famous, of course, for, for music, uh, classical music. Um, so highly recommended if you like this, this kind of stuff. Um, finally, what about our students? So this is a, a relatively small program, I would say. We typically welcome 10 to 20 students. Um, and the intake is only in the winter term. So um, we don't have an intake in the summer term, only in the winter term. 10 to 20 students, and it's a very international program. So about 80% of our students come from abroad. So only 20% from Germany. Um, and here you see um, the, the continents uh, students come from. And I think the key message is that it is quite widespread. Um, so we have students, a lot of students from Asia, but also from North America, South America, Africa. Uh, Africa is, is something that is also um, a focal point of the university because we have a lot of uh, programs um, on Africa an excellence cluster for uh, African studies in Bayreuth. And, and so uh, we also have some students in this program from, from Africa. Um, and graduates in general have a variety of career options, including doctoral studies, international companies and organizations. It's a quite young um, degree program, so I don't have a lot of data, but many of our students go uh, on to, to, to do some doctoral studies. Uh, so quarter to, to a third, I would say, uh, of our graduates have done uh, uh, or are doing a PhD after after completing the MA. But as I said, international companies and organizations is, is also a career option after doing this program. And yeah, with this, uh, I, I would like to close my presentation. I'm looking forward to your question later on. You can have a look at the at the web page of our program and um, also drop me a, an email, of course, um, if you have further question after this uh, meeting. Thanks a lot.
Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, Professor Brown, for your presentation. And yeah, as Professor Brown said, we will have a live Q&A session in around uh, 15 to 20 minutes. So stay tuned and we will address all of all of your questions there. And with that, let me now move uh, a bit to the northern part, a little bit, not too far. <laughs> so uh, University of Vienna, and we have Dr. Markus Pasche, and he will talk about uh, Master of Science level a program in economics. So we are geographically more or less... Uh, closer to the center of Germany, as you can see now. Let me stop the screen share and invite uh, Dr. Pasha to take the floor. Okay, thank you. So let me share the screen first. All right, here we are. Good. So my name is Markus Pasha. I'm uh, a senior lecturer at uh, the University of Jena and also the program coordinator of the Master of Science program in economics. And uh, as you see from the title, we do not have a specialization in the title of the program. It's just simply economics, not economics and or uh, innovation economics or things like that. You can specialize as I will show you later on, but the entire title is simply economics. Um, in my view, it was, uh, or I understood this webinar in a slightly different way, namely I expected that the participants know already something about the program in, that they have informed themselves on the uh, website, our website, or of the website of my German university, which is very extensive, very rich of, of information. Uh, because all questions or nearly all questions you might have in mind, I guess are answered on this website. We have also an extensive FAQ list for both for applicants and also for enrolled students. So that's really comprehensive and uh, covering nearly all questions you might have. If some questions are still open, you can also write me an email, of course. So that's the, the website, the starting point for everything. And as an economist, I, uh, I had the impression that I did not waste too much time with recapitulating stuff here in this webinar, which you can anyway find on the website. So therefore, I'm now concentrating more on those points who are perhaps not on the website and also not on the web page of my German university. First, some, some keywords. Uh, Jena, the Friedrich Schiller University, uh, Jena is a quite old one from the 16th uh, century, so very old. But our faculty of economics and business administration was founded after the German reunification in 1994. So that's a more young uh, faculty, but the university is quite old. It's also medium sized, so between 16 and 70 thousand students, a little bit larger than Bayreuth, but not much. It's also a medium-sized uh, university. About Jena, so we have 111,000 citizens. Um, and yeah, the um, Jena is more characterized by industry, by the optical industry in particular. Perhaps you know Carl Zeiss and Jen Optics, so relatively famous. Um, Optical industry, also shot, is quite famous. And we have also a lot of um, research institutes, or also science plays an important role in cooperation, by the way, with the industry. And that's not only the Friedrich Schiller University. At the beginning, it was mentioned that there also exists so-called universities of applied sciences. We also have that here in Jena. And also Helmholtz Institutes, Max Planck Institutes, Fraunhofer Institutes, most of them are in the field of natural science, chemistry, physics, and so on. But you see it's a quite vivid academic and technical environment. Uh, but we also have some culture, uh, not so famous perhaps like Bayreuth, but also we have a philharmonic orchestra and we have a festival in the summer called Kultur Arena. So there's also something, uh, if you have some cultural interests, and also the surrounding is quite uh, nice for uh, hiking and biking. The campus uh, is perhaps not that lovely as you have seen in the picture for Bayreuth. It's more, more urban, but it's also a campus university. Everything directly located in the center of, of the city. All right, more about our faculty. 
So the Faculty of Economics and Business Administration, we have uh, 22 professors or chairs, and among them we have nine uh, chairs for economics, plus two senior lecturers, where I'm one of, uh, of these uh, senior lecturers. And um, I think it's quite interesting that three of them have a co-affiliation with the EWH Halle. So the, uh, this is one of the big five research institutes. So the others are in, in Berlin, in Munich, uh, Mannheim, and, and Kiel. And Halle is the, the other big research institute. And here, three professors uh, have uh, co-affiliation with us or the other way around. So they are fin financing them and 20% uh, we are financing. So that's quite good to have a close contact to research. Might also be interesting later on after your master's studies, if you want to proceed with doctoral studies, then you can do this also in cooperation with Halle, but also other institutions as well. The structure of the program is a little bit similar like most master programs, also two years, that means four semesters. So you will earn 120 ECTS in total. It's also taught in English. There are very few elective courses in German language, but as they are elective, it's not necessary to have any German proficiency, although you are invited to learn German. More about that later on. This could be also credited for our curriculum. So the teaching language is English. So therefore this will be also one of the requirements that you have good command in English. Uh, more about this when I talk about the requirements. We have a basic area. Here I do not list the particular courses, but just the summary that there are some compulsory courses, for example, empirical methods, that's obligatory, also advanced micro, advanced macro, another, course called Approaches to Economic Science. So these are courses you have to do. And then there are a couple of elective courses you can uh, choose from. So these are 48. So half of the coursework is in the basic area. And then you can specialize more about the different specialization areas on the next slide. And also each specialization area comprises of a compulsory area of three courses you have to do, and then a list of elective courses where you can freely choose. And you have to do two seminars. Uh, seminars are really important for, not just only for, for your academic writing skills, but also for reading uh, uh, recent, recently published uh, papers to understand them, summarize them, also to develop your own research questions to some extent and uh, to train your academic writing skills. So that's super essential because it is a research-oriented program in economics. And at the end, in the master thesis, you should do a small piece of your own research. Huh? So here it's only 24 ECTS, but I think this is also quite a lot. Here we do not have yet a defense, so we will introduce an oral defense of the master thesis on a voluntary basis or depends then on the chairs uh, later on. So this is a novel thing we will introduce um, yeah, because of ChatGPT, frankly spoken, <laughs> uh, so that an oral defense you can demonstrate that you really understand what you have written. Okay, that's the basic structure. Now a little bit more about what are possible specialization areas. All these areas are described on the website, also on the website of my German university. And here you find innovation and change. So everything which has to do with innovation activities or firms, uh, uh, market structure changes, but also change in more on the aggregate level, that means growth and development, things like that. Here we have some expertise because um, the uh, chair holder for microeconomics, Professor Kantner, is also um, the head of the Schumpeter Society and the main editor of the Journal of Evolutionary Economics. So there is a lot of expertise here in this field, innovation, and change. World economy, everything which has to do with global specialization, trade, capital movement, and so on. I think that's self-explaining. Economics and strategy. Here, the focus is more on uh, game theory, on strategic interaction, with a certain focus on quantitative methods. That means microeconometrics. 
public economics comprises public finance, but also um, uh, things like the public educational system, uh, the social security system, and all the things which have to do with the activities of, of the government. Next one, the, the title now is quantitative macroeconomics, but we are just in a transition phase. Uh, I mentioned that three of the uh, professors from Halle, which are co-affiliated with us, two of them have a focus on empirical finance and regulation of financial markets, and we want to make this more visible also in our specialization areas, and therefore in the future it will be retitled as macroeconomics and financial markets. And then we decided that perhaps some students are not willing to specialize. Perhaps they have a general interest in economics and therefore we introduced the, yeah, let's say non-specialization specialization area, which is called general economics. Last but not least, regional dynamics. That's a very special uh, form because this is also interdisciplinary uh, work jointly with the Department of Geography. That's a little bit more complicated to uh, explain, therefore I will skip that. And this requires, that's the only specialization area where German proficiency is required because the Department of Geography teaches in German. Some special features which are partly mentioned on the website of uh, my German university already, we have uh, double degree programs with two Italian universities. That's quite nice. That means the first half of the studies, you will do that in Indiana, and the other half, the other 50% then in Italy. And then you have uh, a degree from both universities. So that's quite nice. And we have special coordinators for these programs. You are encouraged, if you are an international student, you are encouraged to learn German and language courses. German language courses could be partially credited also for the curriculum, up to 12 ECTS. That's quite a lot. Some courses comprise uh, computer work so that you have to do something with MATLAB or STATA or R or things like that. And under certain conditions, if you have a lot of courses of this type, you can earn a so-called DigiLab certificate, which um, tells that, that uh, the whole of this certificate has a good command in computational methods in economics. And then something new, we have a so-called bridging or refresher course, uh, which is a Moodle-based course, which recapitulates essential bachelor stuff in mathematics, microeconomics, macroeconomics, and academic writing. Uh, most students can do this voluntarily in order to refresh their knowledge or also to close some knowledge gaps from their bachelor program. This also might happen. And there might be some students who get, will get, or some applicants who will get a so-called conditional admission, and then they have the obligation to do this refresher course. So that's a quite new stuff, and we make our first experiences just right now with that. Regarding the application, um, you need a good grade. That's, I think, common in all master programs that the grade must be at least 2.5 in the German grading scale or better. You need pre-education and math and statistics. That's quite clear. Six ECTS, that means one large course. And 30 ECTS in economics. And here the question is, what does this mean? So some courses are, could be clearly identified as pre-education in economics, such like microeconomics, macroeconomics, public finance, growth and development, international trade, and so on and so forth. Other courses like, let's say, accounting, marketing, management, and so on, are regarded as business administration, not economics. Yeah? And for some courses, it's not so clear. So we have to make our decision based on the transcript of records, and sometimes it's not so clear. Here we are quite conservative in identifying which courses are at least partially economics courses. Therefore, if you want to convince us, then it would be very helpful if you also upload some syllabi or course descriptions in order to tell us this course was also about economics or at least parts of it. But it's not so helpful when you apply here. By the way, you will apply not directly at the faculty, so we have a so-called master service center with, with a certain application platform where you upload your, your, all your materials. 
What is not so helpful, helpful are recommendation or reference letters, because either you are qualified for the program, then we have to give the admission, and then reference letters are superfluous, or you are not qualified, and then this could not be compensated by having one or two recommendation letters. So usually, frankly spoken, we skip them. So they are not necessary. You can do that, but it's not, not helpful. Also, excessive motivation letters are not that helpful. Keep it very short, clear, plain. Why are you interested in a research-oriented program in economics? Uh, that's it. Also, practical job experience is not that helpful. It's not an MBA program. It's a research-oriented program in economics. So if you have five years job experiences as a salesman or accountant, then we would say, yeah, you are five years out of academia. And a part of your, let's say, math knowledge is uh, depreciated already. So that's not a plus. Uh, so we just say, OK, there is job experience, but it's not helpful you know, for, uh, for the application. In the result, uh, we always have a winter intake, like in Bayreuth. There's no summer intake. It's only winter intake. And we have between five and 600 applications each year. And the acceptance rate is about 40%. And the main reason for rejection is here at this point, the economics uh, pre-education. Also, we have a lot of international students between 80 and 90%. Uh, the countries where they come from, uh, so I do not have a graphic for that because this is changing in time. Asia plays an important role, but in the last years, Africa became even uh, also enormously important. And we have not so many students from America. Huh? So it's also very intercultural. Uh, you meet students from very with a very different background in, in the courses. And I think this intercultural experience is also a big asset. Okay. All right, that's from my side. Then you can just ask me or write me an email. Thanks. Perfect. Very good presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, very clear. And with that being said, now I will, um, let's say, I will say, let's open the floor for the live Q&A session and let us address some of the questions that we received uh, during your presentations, dear guests. Let me start um, with this question. So it's a question for Professor Brown. Uh, could you please say a few words few more words on specializations. I didn't fully get the options there. Thanks. And uh, another question, there are two questions actually. One is also related to the specializations. So uh, Professor Brown, please. Yeah, so, so in general, you can take up to three specialization courses, or let's say you get credits for three specialization courses. Of course, you can take more but you would get credits for three courses. One of the three courses has to be a seminar in either the history or the economics department. So um, in Bayreuth, in the economics department, we have about 10 chairs and they regularly offer uh, seminars in all areas of economics. Our chair, of course, typically is some economic history related. I offer a course in a seminar in migration, uh, but you could also take uh, seminars in history. And then for the other two options, you would be completely free. So of course, it might make sense to specialize in, in things that are related to your studies, but in principle, um, you can get credit uh, for, for everything. So some also take language uh, courses, um, for example, but also other departments. So that's, that's the specialization uh, module uh, in Bayreuth. Okay, clear. So very clear. Thank you very much. Also good to know this kind of the amount, the specializations that's possible to take. And regarding the thing with the topic of specialization, there's also a question for Jena. The question is, when is it possible to choose the specialization? From which semester? Yeah, right from the first one. So we have a campus management system and this, uh, this online system that uh, urges you a little bit to make your decision. Uh, so you usually you will do this in the first term, but you might also change it later. But don't wait too long. I would say at the end of the second term, that's perhaps the latest point where you might switch to another one. But you can do this very early. Okay. Okay. Clear. Uh, Dr. Pasha, let me stay with you. There's a question 
how doable is it to immediately move from the master's to the PhD at your university in economics, of course? Yes, so we have some structured PhD programs. So there are, currently there are two structured PhD programs, one with a focus on innovation and change, uh, like the first uh, specialization area. The other one is more interdisciplinary one about digital, digitalization. But currently we are working on the third one, which is uh, linked to the so-called Central German uh, Doctoral Program in Economics, this GGCDE uh, program which is jointly with Halle, uh, Leipzig, but also Dresden and Magdeburg. And so courses from this uh, framework are then also counted as a structural program in a PhD program here in our faculty. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's uh, uh, frankly spoken, uh, not one third or so of the students. We have, by the way, more. So per intake, um, before Corona, we had 80 roundabout and in Corona and after Corona, it's more, 35 or 40, and among them, I would say uh, 10% are then proceeding with a PhD. Uh -huh. Okay, clear. Thank you. Uh, now I'm moving to uh, back to uh, Bayreuth. So, hi, Professor Brown. If one has an undergraduate in history, but is not that good in economics, would you say it still makes sense to apply? I think this question came before you explained this also these variations that students can take the pass, but please. Uh... Yeah, so the question is whether it's about the chances or whether I would recommend taking this program. So typically the students with a background in history that apply to our program, what they really want to get from the program is to, to get some of additional expertise in economics and also quantitative methods. So, and I would definitely recommend that you should not be afraid of say quantitative um, methods because in the end there is a compulsory econometrics course and this is the regular econometrics course that also the economic students would have to go through in, in Bayreuth. And if, um, people or students find parts of the program challenging, it's typically this econometrics course. Um, so the question is really, are you are you happy with this? Uh, are you up for this challenge? Um, if you don't think that sort of quantitative methods is for you, then it's probably not the right program. Okay, thank you. Uh, now uh, back to uh, Jena. What is the level of German required for the German language specialization? Is it B2, C1, C2? Yeah, uh, here we have DSH2, which is comparable with a little bit less than C1. Okay, yeah. it's quite high but, level. Uh, yeah, that's quite high level, uh, but um, practically in the past we had the cumulated number of students in this specialization area, I think is two. <laughs> it's really a rare, a rarely chosen specialization area. Okay, clear. Thank you. Now, question for uh, two both both programs. Let me uh, start with uh, Professor Brown. Both programs mention two point five GPA as a requirement. Is it a fixed and strict threshold, or is it a possibility to give an opportunity for students who have, let's say, two point six as a, a cumulative GPA? Please, Professor Brown. Yeah, it's an important threshold, but in principle, there is the possibility in our program to take an aptitude assessment uh, test, so like an interview. And if you really have a background that fits, fits really good with the program, highly motivated, da, 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 and right <laughs> knowledge, um, then you may have a chance to also get into the program with uh, a GPA uh, a little bit higher. Okay, clear. Thank you. And in case of you, in case of um, Jena? Yeah, it depends a little bit. So as I've mentioned, we have between five and 600 applications each year. So somehow we have to sort out a little bit. 2.6, I think uh, that's not, here we would have a look to the other criteria. So whether the other criteria, math, statistics, and economics uh, are, are crystal clear so that you clearly meet them, or if perhaps the grades in the economics courses are maybe even a little bit better than 2.6, then we would say, yes, okay. Uh -huh. uh, but otherwise we are relatively strict. Okay, so 
clear. And the air attendees, by the way, 2.5 GPA is mentioned. If you have missed that, I don't know. Uh, it's um, German scale, 2.5 yes. your scale. I mean, your scale, <laughs> I mean, the usual scale outside of Germany would not be that good. So 2.5 is actually good evaluation uh, in your terms. So I will also shortly put in the chat how you can transfer approximately to put your uh, GPA into the German perspective very soon. But let me address one more question before I do that. Uh, question is for uh, Professor Brown. Sorry if I missed it. Is the whole semester dedicated to the internship? No, typically not, if you don't like it at least. So I think the minimum is 180 working hours. So we recommend at least six week uh, internship, six weeks internship, uh, and you can do it during the summer. I think the advantage of having such an internship in uh, as part of the compulsory program is that sometimes um, firms would require this. Um, to have it sort of a compulsory um, internship as, as part of your studies. But as I said, um, it doesn't have to be a full semester and that's typically not what students do. Okay, okay. And by the way, you already addressed another question which was related to the internship for you. So how long should the internship be? You have already addressed it. And are there any restrictions for job descriptions or the positions? Because back home, interns usually do administrative tasks. That's where my question comes from. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, so basically you're completely open. Of course, it depends a little bit on what you want to do after after your studies, right? So if you want to do a, a, a PhD afterwards, then what uh, some students have done, for example, they go to a, a research think tank, um, to which we also have some connections. Uh, but of course, if you want to go to an international company, then, then you would um, go somewhere else. I mean, what you have to take into account, of course, is that Bayreuth is a quite small city. We don't have that much industry. <laughs> Um, so if you want to work for, for bigger international companies, students typically go to Munich or Frankfurt um, and don't stay in, in Bayreuth for the period of, of the internship. Okay, clear. Uh, there is a question. So uh, I did the pre-check test and it is the, resu the result says 40. So according to the page, it will be demanding, but still doable, right? Is it possible to take more electives? Uh, uh, Dr. Pasha, the question came during your presentation. So, uh, is it a, does the question sound the bell? Uh, so, you, if I get it right, if it's possible to do more elective than required by the curriculum, is this right? Is it possible to, yeah. So, the first question is I, uh, a pre check test was done and the result was 40. So, not that great result, but mm. still, still possible, would you say? Yeah. I and think this, this, yeah, more electives. <laughs> this this pre-check, this is anyway voluntarily. We cannot see what you have done and under which conditions you have done this uh, pre-test. This pre-test is pretty simple, I would say. Um, I think that in case of doubt, it would be much, much better to do this refresher course or bridging course. Um, and it's likely that you will anyway get an, a, a so-called conditional admission. What we cannot do, what we are not allowed to do is a pretest, so that the admission is conditional to a test before the admission. That's what we cannot do. Now, we may introduce interviews in the future, but with five or 600 applicants, that's also not a, not a doable thing. And the second question was about the electives. Uh, they, yeah, it's, it's possible to take more electives than mentioned. Yes, yes of course. You can do more electives than uh, required by the curriculum. And then the better ones then will count for the GPA calculation at the end. And the others are then mentioned without grade on your trans final transcript of records. Okay. Okay, clear. It was, and like Professor Brown also mentioned, similar to kind of specializations that you can take more, but of course, some of them will count it, some not. Okay, clear. And I see last question open from Elisa. And it's... Uh, uh, more general question for both, I would say. Good afternoon. My goal is to work at the International Monetary Fund. Nice goal. And to specialize in macroeconomic stability. Which program from this would you... Okay, that's... <laughs> uh, I would say ours. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> but okay, let us let me reformulate it. How heavy uh, is the macro uh, macroeconomic maybe focus of the programs so to say <laughs> let's start with uh, uh, professor uh, dr pache as you as you have started already 
Okay, so if you are really interested in macroeconomics, then I think it's the right place to be. Uh, there's anyway one uh, course in advanced macro in the basic uh, compulsory area. And then afterwards, you can also specialize, uh, specialize in macro and financial markets. So this pretty fits well with your, with your goals. If you are not so much in favor of macro, then of course, after the basic area, you can try to avoid that no, by specializing on yeah, innovation and change or other things which might have less to do with macro. Yeah. Okay, clear. And what would you say, Professor Brown? I mean, we, we, the foundations of economic history, one and two, they are about long run growth and crisis and about the global economy, which are, of course, also macro courses, but of course, from a specific historical perspective, long run perspective. Um, so if you would take our program and you would like to work at the International Monetary Fund, I would definitely then recommend that you also take the advanced macro courses that we, of course, also offer um, and are compulsory for, for the economics MSc in Bayreuth, -right, but not for our program. That's not what many students do, but of course, you have the option to also go full into uh, the economics uh, direction in addition to the economic history. Thanks. Perfect. Great. Thank you very much to both of you for answering all of the questions. And let me now often open my screen once again for official thank you part <laughs> to our guests for wonderful presentations, very uh, high quality presentations, to be honest, and also a very uh, comprehensive answer to the questions. Also, thanks to attendees for tuning in for your interest and for your questions. Uh, I hope at least most of your questions were addressed. If you have any follow-up questions uh, regarding specific programs, you can also get in touch with the program representatives once again via email, for example, or if you have any general questions regarding also studying in Germany, for example, you can also always get in touch with us. You can uh, check out our articles, as I already mentioned. You can attend our webinars, and okay, of course, you can also um, get in touch with us through our social media channels. With all that being said, I wish you a very nice rest of the day. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you on our future webinars as well. Take care, and bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.